welcome back to our channel. Ours, meaning me and Zach, who is not in this video with me. Anyways, I wanted to make a video for all of you who are asking about my journey in becoming a sign language interpreter, um, how long it took me to learn sign language, which I'm gonna answer right now. I'm still learning. Um, and what my process looked like, which I still feel like I'm on that journey and I will always be on that journey, but I'll share with you what I have been through so far. Um, so where should I start? Okay. Some of you may have watched our first, second video on how we met. I don't know why I keep feeling like Zach is right here. Um, I'm just used to him being in the video with me. But in that video, I talked about my first exposure to sign language. I was about five years old. My neighbor was deaf. And I asked my mom if she knew any sign language. Um, and fortunately, she did. She knew um, the alphabet and a few signs like E. I don't remember what else she knew. But she knew a few basic signs. Play, maybe. And... I remember talking with um, my neighbor, her name was Emily, and I fingerspelled a lot. Um, she had taught me a few signs here and there, but I mean, mostly we just played. We're like five years old. We played tag, hide and seek. There wasn't a lot of communication going back and forth, um, but we had a lot of fun together. And that was my first exposure to sign language and to someone who um, is deaf and hard of hearing. So I remember we moved away when I was about seven years old and unfortunately I forgot pretty much everything I learned. Um, I still kind of knew the alphabet, but if I'm being honest, I really didn't remember the alphabet. I knew like A and B, C. I thought this was D like most people, but this is D. D is for dad. Um, and so going into college, they offered sign language classes and I thought, hey, I've heard about sign language. This sounds really cool. And I took Spanish in middle school, wasn't that great at it. Um, and so I thought, wow, I'm gonna take sign language, this is gonna be great, and I loved it. Uh, I didn't learn a lot about um, the culture, but I did learn a lot about the language, and um, I fell in love with it. And so when I was getting ready to go to college, my dad was asking, and my mom, what I wanted to do, and at that time, I thought I wanted to be an elementary school teacher. I loved being with kids in the classroom. I loved seeing them develop and grow and all that stuff. Um, but I also really loved sign language. I wanted to still learn the language, being involved in the culture. So I was trying to figure out what that would look like for me um, in regards to my career choice. But I continued um, studying to become an elementary school teacher. I went to a community college just because I still wasn't that sure what I wanted to do. I thought it would be a safer route for me. So I went to Long Beach City College near my home and I retook American Sign Language 1 and 2 with my mom. Um, just because I, even though I learned it in high school, I never really practiced it and so I didn't really know how to use it. So I thought it would be good. Plus my mom really wanted to learn because I liked Zach. And so um, I took sign language again and I started to get more involved within the deaf community. Um, there's a school called California State University Northridge and they used to have, they still have these retreats, it's just a different name. Um, it used to be called Silent Weekend, now it's called the Deaf Studies Retreat. And so I remember going to that my first year, and it's this weekend getaway with deaf people, signers, people involved with the deaf community, and um, I loved it, because at this retreat, it's the first time ever where it's just a group of people involved in the deaf community, voices are off, you're not supposed to talk at all, and at that time I still didn't really know a lot of sign language, so it was really challenging for me. The workshops I went to were not interpreted, so I missed a lot of information, but it was such good exposure for me to be immersed within the deaf community and the deaf culture, and I loved it. And at that point, I knew, okay, I'll, as much as I love children, I love the deaf community. I love the deaf culture. I want to be involved in this for the rest of my life. And I felt really the way to do that was to become an interpreter. Um, and so, 
coming back from that retreat, I spoke with my advisor at Long Beach City. I said, okay, like, I know I wanted to do liberal studies, but I'm thinking about changing majors. I heard that California State University Northridge, CSUN, um, offers an interpreting program. I would love to be able to transfer there one day. What do I need to do? And so I took the classes I need to take at Long Beach City General Ed, and um, the more I talked to deaf people and other interpreters, they all kept saying the same thing. Get involved in the deaf community. Get involved in the deaf community. Get involved in the deaf community. Um, and I think that that's what I'm going to tell everybody else who's watching this video. Get involved in the deaf community. Because I did take, I mean, I took a lot of sign language classes. Um, I went to another community college, El Camino, and I took American Sign Language 2 again there. They had a different deaf teacher, and I really wanted to be in her class. I heard she was an amazing teacher. And I took ASL 3 there. I took deaf culture there, which was all great, and I learned a lot. But really being involved in the deaf community um, was the best. And that's really, again, why I wanted to become an, an interpreter, was to be involved in the deaf community. Um, and so I feel like that's where I really learned the language. That's where I understood it. Um, that's where I was able to practice it um, and really just get connected with people like I and that's what I love I love connecting with other people and so I moved up to Cal State well I used I moved up this is why I prefer signing I stutter a little bit less I moved up to Northridge which is about an hour and a half away from where I live and I um, actually didn't go to Northridge at first I went to another community college uh, Pierce College and I continued to take ASL 5 there um, and a few other courses just for a short time before I transferred over to CSUN. Transferred over to CSUN finally in 20... 2014. Yeah, 2014. And um, I applied for their interpreting program and I was so nervous because obviously we all compare ourselves and so I'm looking at the other students who are applying I'm like wow their signing is so beautiful I love their hands like their fingers it's so weird when you interpret or when you're involved you just look at people's fingers and you're like wow they sign so beautiful um, and we're all a little insecure maybe not but I definitely was and can still be definitely insecure about my signing um, and so I remember just being really nervous I was talking to Zach and my other friends I applied super late so I was like I'm not gonna get in there's no point um, you know, but I'm really lucky to have people who pushed me and said, you can do it, just give it a shot, believe in yourself. Um, and so I did. And fortunately enough, so I got into the interpreting program and that's, I mean, I'm super grateful for that program because I feel like that's really where I got to look at the language and um, dissect it and figure it out. Um, and then figure out how to interpret it because it's one thing to know how to sign and it's a totally other thing to learn how to interpret because there's so much going on while you're processing everything, while you're taking one language and then putting it into another language and making sure they're equivalent um, and make sense and they match the consumer. It's just, it's crazy how much goes on in the brain while that's happening. And I learned so much that I never thought I would learn. It was in, it was intense and amazing and great. Um, I loved all of my professors, Cole, Allison, uh, Cass, and even all my other professors, even before that. I mean, I learned so much from them. Um, and, you know, I'm truly really grateful for all of them. Um, and on top of that, being involved in that program and finally being at CSUN, um, I got more involved within the deaf community, got, went to more deaf events, deaf Starbucks, went to the deaf studies retreats, um, and again, like, it, so my professors and the deaf community is really the reason why um, I'm an interpreter today. Um, I really learned so much from them, and the deaf community has been continuously patient with me and all of my errors and, um, you know, I'm not being clear, I'm signing too slow, or I'm just not making any sense, um, but really teaching me and correcting me and helping me grow and learn about their culture and their language and their community. And, um, you know, it's something that I really treasure and I'm really grateful for. So for any of you who are watching who 
have been involved in my process um, and where I'm at today. I'm really grateful for all of you and all you continue to do for me and all you continue to teach me. Um, and so, anyways, um, so I went through that program, which was pretty rigorous, but exactly what I needed. So right before graduation, actually a few months, I heard about this program in Utah called VRSII School to Work, and um, I decided to apply. I was also, again, very nervous and secure, wondering, am I going to get accepted? Am I good enough? And what this program focused on is helping graduates transition from being a student and going into the professional world, knowing how to network, knowing how to use the skills they learned in their field of work, obviously for interpreting. And so um, in this program, we focused a lot on medical interpreting, VRS interpreting, educational interpreting, post-secondary interpreting, um, a little bit on legal interpreting, mental health, all the different fields we're able to practice and um, have a safe environment with another interpreter in these settings with us and to have the deaf person be able to give us feedback on our work, which I think was so great to be able to have the deaf person's feedback since that's really who we're working for um, for the rest of our lives, as well as the hearing people too. We're interpreter for both, both parties. Um, but I really loved that program because I was able to really go deeper into my work and assess my work and um, put it into practice and assess it and then put it back into practice again and improve within each time. Um, and so after that program, I applied at Sorensen. Um, that program is actually through Sorensen. It's like this internship. Um, and so I had a little taste of what that looks like working in VRS setting. So I applied for Sorensen and I also applied to work at CSUN. And since then, I've been working at both places for the past two years, and I absolutely love both of my jobs. Um, I definitely feel like I'm still on my journey. Uh, just like we've taken English classes, you know, elementary through college, we had to take English. I, and the reason is because English is always changing, language is always changing. And so I don't feel like my journey will ever end. I'll always be constantly learning new things, learning new lingo, learning new slang. Um, you know, and just continuing to develop myself as a professional. Uh, but anyways, I hope this helped you. If you have any other questions, feel free to um, leave it in the comments. Send us some messages on Instagram if you're a little bit more personal. And yeah, I think if I, you know, have any advice, again, it's to get involved in the deaf community. Um, don't compare yourself, but compare yourself at the same time. Like, don't compare yourself and say that, oh, I suck, I can't do it, I'm not good enough. But think, wow, like, okay, that person has strengths that I don't have. I want to learn that. How can I learn from them? Um, and I have strengths that that person may not have. How can I help them as well? Um, rather than just comparing and feeling defeated and discouraged, um, continue to work on it. Don't give up. Get involved in the community. Ask questions. Ask for help. Um, and just be humble, always. Always be humble in your process. Um, and becoming an interpreter and being a human, it's just... You can't go wrong with being humble. So again, for any of you who are watching this video who have been a part of my process, I want to say thank you again because um, without you, I wouldn't be where I am in my profession today. But bye. Hope this video was helpful.